And they gave birth to mulattoes, or light-skinned children. And they were proud, giving names to those children. That is how come along the coast of Ghana, where Europeans settled, we have light-skinned people. And some of the Ghanaians, with some European last names, such as Van Dijk, Van der Poel, Van Vika, Van Tels, Da Costa, De Souza, Johnson, Thompson, Texan, Ferguson, Blanson, Williams, Thompson, Taylor, McCarthy, Brown, Smith, Dixon, all the sentences. These names came out of raping black women. Before they came to do this, we never had this name in Africa. There were typical African tribal names that if they mention, you know that this person is a Ghana, it's an Ashanti, it's a Vontiri, it's a Dagoma person. Our names are for identification. And they couldn't pronounce these names and they corrupted them. These are not names that we should be proud of as Ghanaians. And that is one of the major, major reasons why it is becoming very, very difficult for all the Africans in the diaspora coming back to Africa today and be able to identify that, that they are direct families. Because they come to Ghana from the diaspora with names like Usain Bolt, Michael Jackson, Oprah Winfrey, Stephen Harvey, Spark Lee, LeBron James. You are Ghanaians, tell me, where would they go to? They can't go anywhere. This is sad, but I don't know how we can change this. So we are talking about slavery, it's a serious, it's a serious something. It's not something to joke with. Let's move. We just got here, we parked. As you can see far there, it's the beach. I just want to show you around. Belgrave Memorial Hall. It's this one. Few places like that. Yeah. Very nice. We have some students coming for excursion. Yeah. Walking around to the castle itself. So this is the actual entrance to the castle. So these are a few pictures that we have here. Thomas Sankara, Burkina Faso's former president, I mean long-time president. And this one, Frederick Douglass. Malcolm X, Marcos Garvey, Flight Lieutenant John uh, Jerry John Rawlings. Yeah. So this is where they displayed the African stuff. We'll come back there. This is the stairs to go upstairs. They have shops here. They sell in African clothes, bags. That's the building. That's where they did evil stuff. This, this building. That's the building inside the castle. So this is this is it, and you can see a lot of students coming around. So this uh, round metals that you see, I think that in today's time we would say the bullet or the bomb or whatever, they put it into this machine and then trigger it and it go far away. Whichever boat that is, they feel threatened with it, then they have to blow it up. So yeah, so this is the main building, outside of the building. Up here, you can see outside the castle, you can see the sea, beautiful sea. Very nice. And that's the building. There's a stairs here. For the first time in my life, I'm here. 
I've never been here before, so it's my first time. Even though there's a wonderful breeze, we're still sweating. We climb the stairs, we are up here. Yeah. There are a lot of these spaces. I think it's deliberately made for. Don't take my word for it. Maybe when there's a, a war, they have to fight against a ship coming to take over or something. So at the moment, we've not been inside yet. We're just exploring outside the castle. Inside the castle, but around the castle. Not where they kept the slaves. We haven't been there yet. So. Yeah. So I think our tour guide is ready to take us. Okay, so we've been told that the tour is going to start from here. We are inside the This one was started by the British around 1665. So we have 1482 Elmina Castle, 1661 Danish Accra, and 1665 British Cape Coast. This one was built at the time trans Atlantic slave trade started on the continent of Africa for 200 years already. So the way British designed this particular castle, the dungeon that we are going to see today. They kept 1,300 black people at one time. More than that of Almina. Men were 1,000, women 300. That is what we are going to see today. They kept them two weeks minimum to three months in the dungeons, all because of availability of British ships. But 1807, British passed a law so they stopped slip trade. That was led by one William Wilberforce. 1814, that was part of the same law. Sorry. That's time to 1860. Africa, slave trade didn't stop. That's a long continent for about 40 years. The British named that one illegal. So, 1860, this trade stopped finally. The U.S. building as a colonial administrative center. Not only Ghana, British colonial for this building, but other English colonies in West Africa. You can talk of Nigeria. So Lalim, this building served as their headquarters. And the British were here up to the time Ghana regained our independence on the March 6, 1907. Then we can move the British out of this building. So the structure, as of 2024, it is 359 years. That is the age of this building. Elmina the first is about 542 years old. Are those of you who get a chance to enter the museum briefly? You read to the end, to the end, you get to know that before the structure was built by the British in 1665, this land changed hands from Portuguese through Swedish people, through Danish, through Fetu. The Fetu are the local, the indigenous. Then through Dutch and to the British. It was all through war. When the British defeated the Dutch, and they built this whole structure and they were trading. They knew other whites were attacking. The British brought all this cannon to see a lot for defense. That was why. They stay here for over 200 years and nobody conquered it. When the British were here, Dutch attacked them. Danes also came. French came. Germans came. Including sea pirates. Sea pirates came here. And all those people couldn't conquer the British because of the defense weapons. We built a structure using small, small bricks. We start walking, see some bent bricks. Okay, if you look far away from here, you can see there's some like a square area. And see some bricks out there. They brought those bricks from England. That's what they used to build the castle. They brought these materials to balance their empty ships to Africa. 
when they were going, they used black people as balance. The way. There wasn't cement when they were building. So they built this whole structure using grounded oyster shells, sea shells. They mixed that with lime powder and then palm oil. And the foundation of the building is a rock. They built a castle on a huge rock. That is why for years the building is solid. So this is a small introduction before we start a tour, which will take us about one hour. So for now, any question? There's none. We are starting from a set. So let's all attend this work. So all of you, you have to bend very low. So we are going. Go and go inside. They are going. And this set was built for some of the black people that British kept in the dungeons. And Africans were not treated badly. So some of them were fighting British. Their message was freedom. They wanted freedom and revenge. Those doing that, men like us, British bring them here. They said half the rig was taken. There was a door here. Can you come? Yes, come. There was a door you can see. We have removed this one. Another door in the middle, and a last door. They would bring the Africans here. They would lock the three doors. They wouldn't give them food. No air, no water. After the time, they killed them all. They died through starvation. Mm -hmm. The last door left is open. I look at the movie I was waiting here. Mm -hmm. If you lock the three doors in your head, just imagine. That was how British killed Africans. And these people were Christians who they were Anglicans. That is how they killed black people. But we, today we are not dying, we are going outside. We are very very low. <laughs> <laughs> These are our Scottish names. Macri came to this castle in the year 1830 as a governor. When he got to the mill dungeon, in the olden days, the way they built the dungeons, when they were ready to go with the Africans, they wouldn't allow them to come outside. So most of it took place where the students are making the noise now, where they are standing. There's something like a wall. This wall, there was a hole and a roof. The hole started from the dungeon, if you see that window. All the, the ships. So when they're ready to go with the Africans, they walk in and go to the ship. They don't come out to the seconds. Macri came to block that hole. He did that to signify the end of the slip trade. The same man started a court up there called McLean's Hall. Because after slip trade, fourth and he went through to the slip hall. was also the architect of the bond of 1844. McLean stayed in the castle 17 years. Mosquitoes killed McLean. You know mosquitoes? <laughs> yeah. Died 1847, 1846 from malaria. This is the wife of McLean. My name Leticia Elizabeth Lennon. She was the only white woman who came around during the entire period of the trip. But within two months, the woman was found dead. There were lots of rumors at the time. The school of thought said she was killed and was not within two months on arrival. The other one said because McLean stayed longer, McLean wasn't going to England again. McLean has gone in for an African woman for Miss Barnum and Macra. So when Letitia came to head of that story, out of jealousy, she took some poison and killed herself. And the last one said the woman that McLean was going out, the other woman was a beautiful woman. And she wanted to have McLean forever as a husband. So when Letitia came, the Ghanaian woman posed as a servant, then poisoned Letitia. So that she got McLean's marriage. So these are the theories surrounding the death of this lady. So till now, 2024, me, I don't know what she will but it did actually die. She died in 1837, 10 years before the husband died. In 1836. So, what do you think killed the tissue? This one is for an African from Cape Coast. He was the only African who was buried during the entire period of the trek. It was called Philip Kweku. Kweku is a Ghanaian name. But the Kweku was corrupted into Quack. Because British couldn't pronounce our names properly. So, this man, his father, Work with the British in the old Indies. So, because of that, they took their son to England. They were three Philip, Thomas, and William. When he got there, the two died. He survived. British trained him as a pastor and a teacher. And look, this is a church, the one with the blue wind. Where these people are standing? The one up there. It's a, it's a the church. But the church is just above the dungeon. So, he preached up there. At that same time, blacks were suffering in the dungeons. This man taught some who laughed to children. He worked for the British for the rest of his life. 
died October 17, 1816, 75 years of age. So because he worked for them, that was why they honor him with the marriage. Apart from this man, all the Africans who died during the time period were trade were thrown into this. They were not finished. From here, we are going to the dungeon. <laughs> Let's all go this way. Please watch your steps. Can we move, please? British divided the dungeons into five. So this is one. Two hundred black people. When this must be two hundred. Mm -hmm. Who was in the prison? So these three holes were their windows at the time, given to them. Some of them got blind. And they stayed three months to escape. You look at the floor, you can see the brick I was trying to talk about. This is original. Yeah. They didn't give the Africans toilet facility or urine. So our people would compare to go to toilets on themselves here. They will urinate in the They will lie on the bare floor for three months. It was nothing like chair or mattress to sleep on. See these trenches? They build them as they are urinate. So that when they urinate, the urine will run through the past into the sea. But you reach a time, some of them started fighting the white people. They wanted freedom. Some of those were the ones that they killed in the cell where we came from. Because they were many, if they kill all, they will lose. Some were identified. They identified some of them. And they brought them on to this side, to where we are living. So then they created a door here. So this place was called a strong room. So British were not coming to clean the solid waste. So the waste started piling. Started from one level to the other to the other. They reached a particular time, that's the bricks we see now was covered with human waste. Became thick like this. So I want to show you that one. So those around the wall, this camp was previous. Come for a bit. The one with the light, this one a bit. Can you all come forward a bit? You want to see? Help me with the light, my brother. And look on the wall, but look down a bit. Look down, you can see some lines on the wall. Mm -hmm. You can see some markings. Yeah. Because they stopped cleaning this thing, the waste came up to the bottom of the lines. Let's start again. See, this one. <laughs> see, this one. The bridge has heights. You can see the lines all over. The bricks wasn't showing us. But in the year 1974, 50 years ago, the University of Ghana Archaeological Department came to excavate this thing. That was when they found these bricks. That was only one in 74. So if you were to come here before 1974, you would not see these bricks. You see solid dark waste. Mm -hmm. So they cleared all at that time and they left a portion of that. That one is at the back here. The place where they come up with the residency. So they are fenced. So look inside the fence, I mean the lights. There's something that small fence. There's something like a square. Mm -hmm. It's darker than the bricks. Can you see that one? One is solidified and says dry waste. This was tested and it proved that it had toilet, jewelry, sweat, tears, mm -hmm. and other things. So this is for ancestors. But because it's been a long time, now this has changed like an organized soil. So we're done with the first dungeon, we are moving to second and third. All the steps on the other 
The second one said, Ted, 200, 200 times 5,000. You see who's like this in the dungeon, ladies and gentlemen, means windows. The bigger one here serves as a spy hole. And on top of this dungeon, British went to build a church. <laughs> and they were Anglicans. They were like, this was done in the name of religion, Christianity. So they go to church at the top, they shout hallelujah. And people were here suffering. And they didn't see anything wrong with them. British people. This is the last one. But I'm the fifth one. And this one to help 200 black people. But let's do some exercise. Look at this floor. Can you see bricks here? No, no. This is solidified as a distance, as a scrabblist. The original floor is made of bricks. They only excavated the first damage. The other floor has nothing touched. And out of the thousand, by the time we were ready to go with them, and a lot of them died. They just survived. They were gathered in the darkness. They changed it. When they reached here, then it was a hole at the back of this white skull. We call it the tunnel. That is what has been magnetic to the book. So they walked through the tunnel, all over the ship. They will not go outside. But the tunnel was blocked when it was stopped by magnet. But when we go outside later, we can see part of the hole. Where it is blocked. When they bring Africa from the darkness to where they are guided now, they're going to stay here for over a month. Somewhere actually sick and weak. So when they reach the sick ones, they'll select them all. They'll send them to that small room to go and wait. Just to allow those who are strong to go. That was why this window was created. Because in the old days, there was no night. It was created for them to see who is sick and who is not sick. This place was called Selection Room or Sorting Room. Whenever the strong ones stay, the sick ones, they brought from there, they cast them back here, but eventually all of them died because they were not giving any medical attention. What we see in front of us is a shrine. I believe you all know what is a shrine. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And before Europeans came to Africa with Christianity and Islamic religion, that was brought by the Arabs. Africa, we knew God already. Mm -hmm. uh, people pray to God through small and the orphanization through ancestors. The Almighty God. Before you can build a structure in 1665, the indigents who were here and the shrine like this. Around this part of the land. When the British came, they occupied this space forcibly. They built a dungeon. They were giving our people. They stopped the indigents from coming to us to pray. Local people came for their shrine to their community. So when the British left, they brought it back here. This was brought here around 1960. They called it Nanata Cape Coast as about 77. This day it is. They're not this one. If you look here, ladies and gentlemen, that's the flowers around. It doesn't mean that someone died here. Those taken away, the actual people they didn't get the opportunity to come back alive. And the descendants are coming over globally. Like you all here this morning afternoon. So whenever they come, we go and walk in a spirit like this for them. Frankly speaking, many, many of them share tears with us. But that's not prayer, they call a nation, they do it rituals, they leave these flowers in. And go, but that's why the place is full like this. So today, we will not be going to the sick bay as happy in the old days, but walking through the dark tunnel to the ships. But we are free. So you can look around, take your photos after that, we'll go back. Oh, me like New York.
Really sad, yeah? Yeah, it's sad. It's really different from where I went. Okay, let's move on, please. Let's go. Part of the tunnel. Look at the hole. Stretch your leg. See a hole there. This hole started from where the shrine is. Hmm. So from there, the men who walked through this one. Oh. Underground. Underground to the top, no return. So this was where they checked on them as they go to the exit. Hmm. Have you seen a hole at all? Yeah. It's a big one. Oh. Sorry for all lights, you know. <laughs> About 80 meters long. From the beginning to this place, 80 meters. So they walk from there. Che, when they reach here, at first, all the men will go this way to the ships. But due to the tidal waves, the sea was coming in. The British then closed that side. And this became the new entrance. So for me, instead of them going this way into the ships, they turn this way. So let's go out. So, so this, this was open as well? Yeah, it was open. So it started from where the shrine is, to okay. this place. I'm in, I'm in Africa still. Before we went to I'm the build that room, room. I'm coming we entered a cell. We were all sweaty. You remember the cell? And I told you that was a deaf cell. This one is also a cell. This one was built for some of the female slaves that British wanted to rape by the women refuse. Europeans didn't come to Africa with their wives because they were slaves. Malaria killed them. It turns that they named the coast of West Africa White Man's Grave. So holy men like us came. Left their wife like you in England to take care of their children. But the British men who were here with apples. And they were not Roman fathers. Mm -hmm. They couldn't stay and live for a long mm -hmm. time without them. So they raped African women. But yeah. so sometimes, if they wanted to do that, women would be fighting instead. They should say no to rape and see a lot of them fight. They would stay for one week for punishment. They were doing that for other women to see that the next day they were going to go to You don't know what? <laughs> if they, they approach you another time. Yeah. 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 This is what they did to us. Hold the whole day was that toilet. <coughs> that also the toilet. They passed food and water through this one. Once in a day, sometimes twice. Yeah. So I go to the female dungeon. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm not going to fix it. Maybe I thought it was bad. I don't like it. I don't like it. I and I told you that place was designed for thousand men. This and the other one. Please keep going. So women were 300. And women shouldn't have been taken as slaves. Because we know the origin of this slave trade. It all started in the 1500s. When in the history of the whole world, there was 
this man called Christopher Columbus. He said he discovered the Americas, which is not true. But when he said so, the Spanish people moved from Europe to those places and they established their farms where they needed labor to work. So they tried to use the indigents, called the Native Americans, or the Red Indians to work for them. But according to the same Europeans, they said those people were not strong and they were dying from diseases. So there was a Roman Catholic bishop. His name was Bartolomeo de las Casas. He suggested to the Spanish people to look for alternative sources of labor to replace the Native Americans. And for that matter, look for black people who are stronger and can work under similar climatic conditions to replace the Native Americans. So from then, the demand for black people started coming in. So they came for Africans to go and work for them on their farms in the New World. So if we talk of weeding and harvesting sugar cane, cotton, tobacco, rice, and working in the construction sectors, men like us would have been a preferred choice. And they took women also. And the question is, do you know why? Yeah. Do you know why? Yeah. Yeah, tell me. So they were taken to go and give birth so they would get more. So when the woman got there, 300, Europeans forced them to multiply in their millions. They used them to work 400 years. Nothing was paid to them. So we made them whom they are today in the Europe and America, so they should give us a break. <laughs> and this then the women were treated like the men. They would go to toilets, they would urinate. At the end of every month, women pass their menstruations. Here, you are women, just imagine that. They didn't allow them to bath. They didn't clean their feet. They didn't give them sanitary pad for three months. Psychologically, just imagine that. And upon all this treatment given to them, Europeans still raped the African women in this dungeon. So anytime they wanted to do that, because they didn't come with their wives, they, they live at the top, we go there briefly, they'll come down, they'll come and open this, or the other one, look through the women. And got a nice one, they'll select you, they'll go and get you. They will not even tell you what they were going to do to you until you land in their bedroom. If you refuse them, they'll rape you in their bedrooms. They'll bring you to the cell, they'll lock you for a week. Some of them became pregnant. So when we're ready to go, the women who got pregnant were not taken away. They freed them from this building, or this dungeon. They built houses for them in the Cape Coast town. They kept them there. They became free people. They gave them all they needed. When they gave birth, sometimes they would free the mother, the child. Or they would take care of the mother and the baby after about 10 years. And they would take the lights in between the mother. They would bring the mother again to come and serve as a slave. And they gave birth to mulattoes, or light-skinned children. And they were proud, giving names to those children. That is how come along the coast of Ghana, where Europeans settled, we have light-skinned people. And some of the Ghanaians, with some European last names, such as Van Dijk, Van der Poel, Van Vinka, Bartels, Da Costa, De Souza, Johnson, Thompson, Tessie, Ferguson, Blanson, Williams, Combs, Taylor, McCarthy, Brown, Smith, Dixon, all the senses. These names came out of raping black women. Before they came to do this, we never had these names in Africa. There were typical African tribal names that if they mention, you know that this person is a Gan, it's an Ashanti, it's a Vontiri, it's a Dagoma person. Our names are for identification. And they couldn't pronounce these names and they corrupted them. These are not names that we should be proud of as Ghanaians. That is one of the major, major reasons why it is becoming very, very difficult for all the Africans in the diaspora coming back to Africa today to be able to identify that, that they are direct families. When they come to Ghana from the diaspora with names like Usain Bolt, Michael Jackson, Oprah Winfrey, Stephen Harvey, Spark Lee, LeBron James, you are Ghanaians, tell me, where would they go to? They can't go anywhere. This is sad, but I don't know how we can change this. 
And we are talking about slavery. It's a serious, it's a serious something. It's not something to joke with. Let's move. Which were built for one human being at a time. When they're ready to go with them, they'll bring the women from here, men from the other side, chained together. They walked through. That was, and nobody came back again. Like. And the door was made bigger like this during British colonial time. We happened to visit the first castle, Elmina. Elmina has original. This was replaced. And if you go through this door of no return, during the time of slip through as a black person, one, you will lose your identity. You will lose your culture, respect, dignity, and everything. From here, some of the captives were taken to North America, United States, places like Jamestown in Virginia. North and South Carolina and all the regional British states in America, the 13 columns, they all passed through this castle. Some were taken to England, Liverpool. And Liverpool was the biggest slave harbor in the whole of Europe. Some went to Bristol, Bahamas, Trinidad and Tobago, Jamaica, including Barbados. But also went to Brazil, Brazilians, were taken to Almeida Castle because Brazil was a Portuguese colony. Some of the Brazilians were taken from Angola and Congo. But if you talk about Suriname, Dutch Guyana, Curaçao, were also taken from Elmina by the Dutch. Those who went to the French Caribbean, they were taken from Senegal, Gori Island. But those who were taken to Haiti, they were taken from Benin and some part of Nigeria. And ladies and gentlemen, Brazil received the largest number of slaves from Africa. Do you know that? Brazil got 47% of the entire slaves from Africa. And Brazil is the third largest black population in the whole world, outside Nigeria and Ethiopia. As of today, 2024, Brazil have a black population of about 93 million. Ghana, we are 13 million. So they multiply our population three times. So all those guys see playing soccer in Europe, and people clap for them on TV that they are Brazilian. They are not Brazilians, so they are black people. Because Brazil is not an extension of Africa. You must know that. They are there because of this evil trait. Any question? If you see them playing soccer in Europe, tell them they should come back to Africa. They should come back. They are African. Good. Let's come this way. I have one question. Yes. One question. Do we know any of, uh, do we know how many people were here? How many people yeah. were, were here? here? Yeah. How many slaves? Slaves at one time? No, 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 no. no. Okay. Total. Total. Are you yeah. talking of the entire period? Yeah. yeah. The people that were passed through estimate about three million. Only here. Only here. The whole of Africa estimate about sixty million oh. for four hundred years. And how many soldiers were here? So just like living. In... Okay. The entire structure, Europeans who were here, they were between the numbers of 150 to 200. I was soldiers, pastors, governors, clerks, all of them, all the other stuff. Great. That was one of the reasons why they weakened the blacks in order not to rise against them. It was a strategy. Yes, sir. Because the door of no return was small, this was a staircase that the British used. They didn't want to go to the narrow door. President Bernie didn't want to suffer. <laughs> so after I go to the door in chains, the sea was here. This construction was done just about some three, four years ago. Just to create a harbor for the fishermen. After I go through the door, the blacks were put on boats from here. From the boats, they will go to the bigger ships far away. You can see this is a, a, a fishing community. You can see from the background. At the back of no return, we have the door of return. Look at it. The door of return is symbolic. It came 1998. We had a ceremony in Ghana called and mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. During that time, skeletons of two black people, they call them Samuel Carson and Madame Christa, were zoomed from Jamaica and New York. They brought the remains to Accra. That's where we are gathered this afternoon. They were in two caskets, the door was open. They were taking to the and showing the graves for a short African funeral ceremony. From there, the remains of the two people were taken to a nearby town called Asimansu, mm -hmm. where we have a slave river for river So because two remains came and are with us buried at Asimansu, 
in 98, that is why we are ringing the door, the door for 10. So ladies and gentlemen, we are all returned. Warehouses where they store goods that they brought in exchange for captives. Okay, but the rooms at the top where residents and offices were British. So you are going up to see the difference to cool down the temperature to ingress some British. So we are going up. <laughs> Did you notice something? Mm -hmm. What is it? Lozirio's place. <laughs> Pula. So British live upstairs and Africans were down sweating. But this is a hall called Palava Hall. And I want us to discuss Palava. But in any case, have you ever heard of Palava before? We have a Ghanaian dish called Palava sauce. Did you bring one? This no. Place? We should have brought one to me. <laughs> I know people say Palama sauce. But this is not a sauce, please. <laughs> this is an auctioning block market. But Palava also came from Portuguese, which may mean trouble, talking, confusion. This was a market. Now I want to explain to you briefly how the blacks were captured first from their homes. They were forced to work for months from their villages. When they arrived here, before they would go to the dungeon, they would auction them here. And they would go to the dungeon for three months. One, Europeans captured some of the Africans physically using guns. Two, they worked with some black people to get other black people. Did you understand that statement? Yeah. So They're using get, our own people. To get our, our own people. Yes. So in reality, nothing has changed though. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Some Africans called slave raiders, like armed robbers of today, were supplied with guns, sardine, sugar, mirror. So they were going raiding villages, capturing innocent people, bringing them to the Europeans in the payment of what they gave them. Few were told that they were taking them abroad for good living. They also accepted that offer. But what brought about 60% or more of the black people was ethnic conflict, intertribal wars. We must know from now that long before Europeans came to Africa in 1471, which was the Portuguese, there was nothing like Ghana or Nigeria or Burkina Faso. Then we had kingdoms. There were empires. African states. So we're ruled by kings and queens. But that matter, the kings and queens will fight each other over a boundary just to expand the territory. Sometimes they fight over land they perceive to be rich or gold or any natural resource. And before Europeans came, the kings and queens who were here will fight with bows and arrows that they made locally. When they go to war with these locally manufactured weapons, after a long fight, one tribe will lose the war. The losers will be taken as domestic slaves. It was more like in them church. 70. Those people, they had some amount of freedom. 
They could marry, raise free children. They could acquire property. Later, they were integrated into the family system. They were not kept in building like those ones. They were also not transported to Europe and America. They were free people in society. And I believe that system of slavery has been with human from time immemorial. Let me give a typical example. In Ghana, I can tell you on authority that not long ago, if you own somebody, he hasn't got that amount of money to pay, you can allow your son, your daughter, to go and work or serve the one you owe for a number of years just to pay the debt. They pay them to work, they call you a slave. But they wouldn't keep in a danger like this. If you are working like that and you are a woman and you are beautiful with a good character, and somebody from the master's family should get married to you, automatically, you free yourself from being a slave to be part of the family. But there's no way I can enslave my wife. I don't think any man on earth can do so. Before Europeans came, we had this system that was well established. And when they arrived, the situation changed quickly. They capitalized on the African system. So they brought guns to the chiefs who were leaders then. The guns were brought to replace the then bulls and arrows. If we know the power of the gun, they would add the whiskey, sadly, or they would do it to the chiefs. The chiefs were to pay, but the system was better. And they would tell the chiefs that they need those guns to protect themselves. Use the guns to fight the other people, take everything. By so doing, they deepen the division among the African tribes. The guns get to the chiefs. They organize themselves with their weapons to go and fight the other people divide and conquer. So the more they go to the war, the end result was to get innocent people like us in exchange for European goods. Brothers and sisters, this was the system 500 years ago on the African continent. If you sit down in the 21st century, look at what is happening globally. Tell me what has changed. That's my question to you. Has something changed? Thank you. So when they sit in Europe and America, they say, Africa, you sold your people. Without telling them they supply weapons to the Africans to fight, some of us will get crazy. Today, there are conflicts all around the globe. Tell me, where are these destructive weapons coming from? Are they coming from Ghana? Good, man. Are they coming from Nigeria? So what has changed? Thank you. The people came from all over West Africa. Some from Ghana, southern parts, the northern beds, three northern regions, Togo, Burkina Faso all over West Africa. You remember places like Salaga in northern Ghana, Tumu, Kaga, those were centers where they gathered them. When they get huge numbers, they walk from Salaga, through Brongahaf, through Kumasi on foot. When they got to Asim Asim, they had a stopover, and they would for the last time. But then when they arrive in a castle, they will bring them here. This was where they would auction them. After auctioning, they would run them. And they would go to the dungeon for three months. So this was a market, auctioning block at that time. Let's go this way. After slave trade 400 years, we went through colonial period for 113 years. You remember colonial time, the capital of Ghana was in Cape Coast. And I mentioned to you the year they moved the capital to Accra. Do you remember the year? I said I'm not standing by the group side. Don't tell me you don't know. I said it. It means you are not listening. When was the capital moved to Accra? Yeah, the ladies, you. The kind of a hole. There we could be, there we in Amadou. So when the capital was in Cape this was colonial court. You know courts? Court. Trump is in court. Court. President Trump is in, is in court. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah, classified yeah. documents yeah. in his washrooms. Yeah. This was first colonial court. Okay. Where they moved the capital to Accra, 1877. Let's move to the government's victory. Thank you. Look through there, that's we can see the photo. Could you move to others to see? This is communication room. Did you see the fort? Yes, yes. Yes, see and balance of waters to see. So yes.
to the front. Others were standing in the communication room. And because the fort is on a hill, if there is an attack from any angle, those they will see first. So they communicate to the soldiers in the castle through the school by raising up their flag. They could flap a mirror in the night. It's light because then there was no telephone. So this is communication. From here, we are moving to the government's response. Are we all here? No, we are climbers at two. We are in the governor's residence. Now, this is a governor's living room. One governor. <laughs> no wife. No girlfriend. This is a living room. Look at the space. The same size than downstairs for yes. 1,000. That is why this is a crime against one race to the benefit of the other race. Because if you need importance of air, but they didn't provide ones for black people on their own soil. Is it not a crime? Now look, this is what did this to us for 400 years. When they kill a lot of people, we, you know, our population just reduced. They took those with the brains from here to go and develop their ends. But today they are coming back against us with human rights. And the question is this, those that they die like this for 400 years, don't they have rights? No. Were they not human beings? But they said that one is okay. But this, these same people are turning around, they are talking about human rights against with Africans. I don't get it. If you want to talk about human rights and be successful, you must talk about what happened to the African race for 400 years. Is it finished? You can discuss the human rights they are talking about today. 400 years in human life, is it a joke? No. This is the bedroom. How many windows can you see here? Two. Move closer, get closer. Fine. This is the bedroom. The bedroom has five windows, one person. He has nine in the living room, five in the bedroom. With the additional two here. In total, 16. 21st century, let me ask you, in front with me. How many windows do we have in the living room today? Today, 21st century. How many do you have, my brother? Maximum is four. Maximum four. As someone was having 16, then, not now. The wooden floor we see now is not original. It was a wooden floor, and we have replaced all. We done the same to the windows and doors. I want to point to your Elmina Castle. Look straight through this window. You can look through the two, you can see. Look through the windows. If you look far away, you can see the land is curving to the tip, to the sea. There is a structure to the tip, mm -hmm. like a hill. That one is the Elmina Castle which was built by Portuguese in 1482. That was where Transatlantic slavery started from. It was built under the leadership of one Don Diego G. Azanguja. That is about 542 years old. This was built 16, so this is 359. That one is 183 years older than this one. So if you are older than somebody 182, I think you are older than this. Slaves from Almina Castle were taken to Brazil, Caribbean, Europe. Here they went to North America. Some to hear about this was the Caribbean. Somebody was asking me where was King Prempe kept. One of the Ashantis called King Akwesi Ajimano Prempe the first was captured in prison at Elmina for four years, taken to Freetown Salalin for a year. After that, exiled into the Seychelles Island for 23 years. So you know he was in prison for 28 years for resisting the British people. The same place was where one of the Ashanti Queen Mothers called Nanaya Asantewa. Was in prison and taking this ship. She died in the ship. So that's what I mean. Let's go back. All right, ladies, any question, comment, and I'll end the tour and we as we finish. Any question? Any comments? Any question? But this is a reception area for the government. It's a governance reception area. Right, so if no question. Okay, so I'll ask a question. As a tour guider, what are you expecting from us 
to take it from all that you've said, that when we go outside and we are talking to people about it, what, what are the end solutions? Like, what should we do? Okay. To African people, yes. we yes. must unite. That is, a, that is our, that's our strength. If we keep uh, uh, living the way we are now, we will never succeed. That's what Kwame Nkrumah was talking about, African unity. And they said that if Kwame Nkrumah unites Africa, they will suffer. But they will not be able to dictate to us, manipulate us. So they did everything possible to eliminate Kwame Nkrumah. They did the to do that. So yeah. if we unite, we will be stronger. But we have a lot of resources in Africa. Mm-hmm. And because we are not united, they keep manipulating, taking everything away to Europe and America. Mm-hmm. And if we unite, we have one common market, one military command, one currency. They will come here, mm-hmm. come and beg, and we'll tell them what to do. Mm-hmm. But because we are not united, they are still manipulating and destroying our everything. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that is a way we have to take away. Okay. Because they keep dividing us in different forms. Mm-hmm. And we see each other as different people. Mm-hmm. That is our weakness. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'll also add uh, one or two that this shouldn't generate hate. But then it's education, how we will deal with things. And the uh, information that we will give out depends on how we explain the information. Otherwise, there will be hatred. Because I know some part of the world that were taken from here, they said they've got, they don't want to have anything to do with white people. But we should remember four years, 400 years ago, those that started, some of them have died and gone, and even they are what 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 have died and gone so it's up to us as a human beings to link to each other understand each other and live harmony it's hard i'm not going to lie it's really hard but we have to try because the moment hate comes in we can't do anything we can't solve any problem we cannot have mutual understanding so we should take hate out of it it's really sad and painful but thank god it is not our generation but we have to. Um, Our generation is going to reset in a different form. Yeah, we have to reset. So if we unite, we can stop this. Mm. All right, so finally, before we exit, then we get a structure. It's 359 years. British started the construction in 1665. It was built using black African labor. The, the construction went through stages. 1,300 people were kept at a time. The state took this many maximum three months. Everything ended in 1816. Now, this is the youngest castle in Ghana. Mm-hmm. It is now a UNESCO heritage site. That was done in 1979. Now, to tour the dungeon this afternoon, gentlemen and ladies, it ought to be in the everlasting memory of the sufferings of our ancestors. We pray that those who died here should rest in perfect peace. And those who loved return should find they are roots and be man never again. And I repeat, never again. Be given that opportunity to commit such atrocities against his fellow human being. On this earth, on this note, my name is Mark Tector. Mark Tector. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. May all of my friends, we say thank you. God bless you.